My day begins well before most people are out of bed. All the long days and sleepless nights drive me to be the best. Absolutely slayed him in here. Alright, let's get up here and we'll turn him loose. He's got the place tore up. The sun's going down. Got one more farm to hit. That commitment there. We can turn him up. This is eight. Pretty good odds. We're good at what we do. This is my story. This is my time. This is Trapping Time. Trapping Time is brought to you by Blind Turtle at blindturtle.net. Smokey's Deer Lords at smokeysdeerlord.com. Blackwater Hunting Services at blackwaterhunting.com. Southern Ohio Outfitters at southernohiooutfitters.com. Papio Creek Trapping Supply at papiocreektrappingsupply.com. Big Game Gut Club at BigGameGutClub.com Hunter's Help Technologies at Hunter'sHelp.com Night Owl Lures at NightOwlLures.com Hilltop Outdoor Supply at HilltopOutdoorSupply.com Dakota Line Snares at DakotaLineSnares.com PCS Outdoors at PCSOutdoors.com Duke Trap Company at DukeTraps.com Old South Trapping Lures at OldSouthLores.com Webster's Predator Control at shop.websterspredatorcontrol.com Little Whiskey Girl at littlewhiskeygirl.com Wolf Creek Products at wolfcreekproducts.net Southern Snares and Supply at southernsnares.com Lennon Lures at lennonlures.com Murray's Trapping Supply at murrayslures.com Smitty Stretchers and Trapping Supplies Look them up on Facebook. Hags Brand Trapping Products by J3 Outdoors at J3O.com. Hello, folks, and welcome to this week's show. This week, we're headed to Mississippi, and we're going to chase Old Chiseltooth. That's right, the American Beaver. You know, I had the opportunity to go down there on a uh, February trip. It, I tell you what, totally different than what I've ever experienced up north. We were fighting warm temperatures, rising water, snakes, and to top it all off, there's a lot of things you can do in Mississippi, trapping-wise, and be legal that we can't do back home in my home state of Pennsylvania. We're going to start out with Jason Webster from Webster's Predator Control. And we're going to show you one of the sets that he put a pretty nice beaver down with that back home would not be allowed at all. All right, Jason, what we got here? Well, we got a beaver. Now, one thing from being from PA and us being in Mississippi now, you can't, we can't trap like this. Back I feel now. like an outlaw. Yeah, I mean, you... Back home, as far as the, the dams and the huts, we have to stay 15 feet away. So being able to actually set crossovers down here is something totally different. Now this property we were trapping on, we are there for one reason and one reason only, total extermination. You know, beavers are such a problem animal down in the south. We don't really experience the problems that they can cause. Uh, timber companies, landowners are fighting with rising water all the time. So the state of Mississippi is very liberal on the types of methods that you can use to trap these beavers. They're using this crossover right here going from this beaver pond and there's another one behind it and then this pit goes down through here and there's actually another beaver pond on down. So what we did is we set this slide up with a 330 at the bottom of it. Got it kind of brushed down and blocked in there to kind of guide him through it and this beaver here was actually evidently coming from that way. Um, it didn't even didn't even take the, the 330 off the sticks that we had it propped up with so he was probably just climbing up out, bam. Yeah, I mean, and typically from what I've understood, setting them at the bottom of the slide like this is typically to catch them coming down it because the momentum carries them, carries them right into the trap. Now, have you ever seen so many beavers in sign in one place like we have <laughs> in the state of Mississippi? No. Up I home, mean, I mean, ours are scattered out miles. And then you yeah. come down here and we're, just, we're loaded up with The crossover set is just that. It's where beavers are crossing over the breastworks of the dam. Pennsylvania, we need to be a certain distance away from any structure, so it limits us. You know, Jason and I even laugh about 
we feel like we're doing something illegal because you know back home it's been ingrained in us that we're not allowed to do this, not allowed to do this. We drive 15 hours away and they're telling us we can do whatever we want. Um, it's a very, very successful set. Um, it connects almost immediately, especially if you have a lot of beaver sign. Uh, it's just easier for these beavers to go from dam to dam bodies of water by crossing over. Uh, the sign's there. You place a trap at the top and a trap at the bottom and uh, just wait for it to connect. Well, let's get him out of here and see what we got. When we come back, we're gonna get the set remade. The Power Clip by Poppy Oak Creek. Changing the way you trap water. Go check them out at poppyoakcreektrappingsupply.com. You take every step to make sure your hunt is safe. Now, take safety to the next level and make sure your field dressing is as safe as the hunt. Hunter's Help Technologies has found a way to make sure your post-hunt responsibilities are as safe as possible. The Easy Gut tool helps you get the chest cavity open without cutting anything but that skin that you want to cut. The trachea cutter does just what it says. You just reach into the chest cavity and punch right through that tough trachea. No more fumbling with a knife to try to avoid cutting yourself in the process. You can find all our products at Hunter'sHelp.com. The Big Game Gut Glove is revolutionizing the way big game hunters and trappers are successful in the field. The 26 inch version fits over your elbows and protects you and your expensive hunting clothing from blood or cold water. They're made to fit your hands from extra small to extra large. What I like about them, I can feel with them. Existing products on the market don't give you the feel or protection you need. Wet or dry, the special non-slip grip bonds tightly to whatever you're handling. The big game gut gloves are reusable so you save money and promote going green. What do you demand in a quality knife? This portion of the show is brought to you by Animalistic Outdoors. Check them out at coyotevideos.net. Welcome back. We're with Jason Webster from Webster's Predator Control and Justin Rogers from Old South Lures. He's our guide. All right, Justin, what we got here? Well, it was a little narrow channel right here. It's a little creek. So we call it a branch down here in Mississippi. It runs down through this little over these woods and goes to the big creek down here. Now, Prince Will 2 has a uh, Duke 280 right here. So, a lot of times these otters will pull up these little small creeks like this, you know, fishing, crayfish, and fish and such. You know, while our guy Justin Rogers was out showing us around and showing us different places and tactics to trap, he was throwing traps out too. And let me tell you what, he was putting traps in places that I would never even imagine. We're going to get it out. I'm gonna, we're going to reset it right quick. I didn't think he was that big when I, I looked at him from the bank. I didn't either. He's not big enough. Now we're kind of doing a mixed bag on this property. I mean, we're we're land trapping, we're water trapping because we're taking advantage of all the fur we can. But no, that's a real good beaver we caught there. I'd say close to 40 pounds, high 30s for sure. We'll probably find some of that caster in some old South Lures this time next year, huh? That's right. That's a real good beaver. <sighs> Now you're gonna try, I mean, it looks like some stuff's been pretty tore up here. You're gonna just you're gonna disturb anything or are you just pretty much gonna try and put it back everything the way it is? I'm just gonna, I mean it's not this was a big mound of stuff right here, but they're hitting this channel anyway, and they're not gonna they're used to coming through here. You see the water's running pretty hard, so I'm just gonna just kinda re just throw it back in here, maybe put a, little, a few sticks up to block it. Just kinda break the outline of this 280. And uh that's about it. I'm not gonna do a whole lot to it. See, it's just clay. It's, that trap's stable. It's not going anywhere. It doesn't bother you that the that the uh, 
body grip and stuff out of the water like that? Not here. Um, which of course likes the, the water's not deep enough. If you saw that, this is exactly what it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. That beater came out down through here. Now, if this was a little bit wider, I would try, and of course deeper, I would try to camouflage a little bit more. If they're coming through here, so that beaver hit that pretty hard. I got this trap set in the, in the last knot because this water is coming through here, so they're going to hit hard and they're going to be committed when they get in there. So I'm just going to kind of break the outline of the trap up a little bit with some sticks here. I love that mud. You can just push it. You can bury them things all the way down in there. I mean, it's just it's so clay mud. I mean, it's just it's it's hard. Yes. I don't do a whole lot. And you got it wired off, so if you do catch something, yeah, I've got he's going to crash around a little bit, but he's not going to get away. But uh, that's it. If you, some people, if you want to take a, take some of this, this brush right here, just kind of, I can help camouflage a little bit. It's really not an issue. It's not an issue because it's, they've only got one way to get up this creek unless they get out on the bank, and they're not going to do that. So. Perfect. That's it. That's all there is to it. The Mississippi Crossover Set Connects. When we come back, it's a Duke Trap Company set of the week. Who better to get your trapping supplies from than trappers who know what you need in the field? Come on in. PCS Outdoors is one-stop shopping for name brand trapping, predator hunting and calling supplies, shooting and pest control gear at discount prices. A lure for every animal you'd be targeting. PCS Outdoors stands above the competition. Quality Asabo brand snares being made here in Michigan. Go to PCSOutdoors.com for great selection and prices that'll make you want to stock up for your next trapping or outdoor adventure. Where'd you get all that stuff? DakotaLineSnares.com. I bet it cost you a fortune to ship all that. Nope, not DakotaLineSnares.com. It's $9.95, flat rate. It doesn't matter what you get. Dakota Line Snares and Trapping Products has everything you need right at your fingertips. Our warehouse is packed with trapping supplies you need to be successful on your trap line. And with flat rate shipping of $9.95 on all orders, you get your money's worth. Hey, what are you doing? I'm going to put my order in at DakotaLineSnares.com now. The trophy moment only lasts a couple of seconds. But the story will be passed on for generations. They only see the glory, not the sacrifice. But I don't wait for my tall tale of glory. I handcraft my journey from start to finish. They don't see what goes on behind closed doors. An epic saga is worth a thousand words. But my story boils down to three. Little Whiskey Girl. Save luck for the weekend hunter. Welcome back. Robbie hijacked the set of the week and I want to show you one of my most successful beaver sets. Now for you young trappers out there that don't know a lot about beaver trapping, you're going to, want to get your pen and paper out and you're going to write this stuff down because it's going to make you a better trapper. Alright, we're setting for beavers today and uh, this pond just doesn't have that ideal set. I mean, we don't have a lot of places for 330s, there really aren't any channels so we're going to focus on leg holds in here. So. You can see I'm probably about 25, 30 yards away from the lodge itself. Now, out from the lodge, you can see their feed bed. We're in January now. The temperatures are about 28, 30 degrees during the day, so the water hasn't froze over just yet because it's still staying pretty active. So we can focus on some of these slides. Now, if you look here, we've got a tree right above us that's got fresh cuttings on it and a really, really good slide. I mean, it's still kind of wet. So that tells me right there they're using a lot. If you look into the water, you can see some of the fresh green cuttings that they're bringing off this hill and they're heading over to the feed bed. I think this is gonna be a, a go-to set. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna put a leg hold and I'm gonna show you a drowning, a simple, simple drowning rig that you can set up and it's gonna put some beavers in your trap shed. What I'm gonna do first is, there's, you always see stick beaver sticks around. I try to find some that are semi-dead. Reason why, a lot of times you use green sticks, they'll come up and chew them off get themselves out. It just seems like if you use a dead stick, it uh, seems to last a little bit longer. Now, a lot of times we'll carry rebar tea stakes in, but we're a good ways away from the truck, so we want to try and keep our, our load to a minimum because we're carrying all of our gear in. Another little trick we do, we got to drown these beavers. So I take a, just a 50 pound feed sack and I fill it up about a quarter to halfway with rocks. This thing's probably 
just guessing, 35, 40 pounds. That's more than enough to hold a beaver underwater until he drowns. We'll end up wiring this up. We'll run a, a slide wire and uh, get him out away from the bank, get him in deeper water. We catch the beaver. When we pull our traps, we don't have to worry about carrying anchoring systems out. We'll dump the rocks out of the bag, take it back, and use it the next time we set for beavers. All right, when we're driving these stakes in, I want to keep them, get them as deep as you possibly can. And when I wire this up, I want that wire to the bottom. You don't want to give that beaver any leverage. If we keep that wire up here to the top, that's going to give him a little bit more pull power. There's a chance he may work it loose or even get the wire kinked and break it. So we'll keep all of our wiring to the bottom. So let's focus on right now getting this drowning rig set up. We're just using regular wire here. Nothing fancy about it. Some guys use a little bit heavier. We've got a uh, a pretty liberal check when we check them, so it'll uh, it'll handle anything. We're just gonna give this thing a couple good wraps. You just want to make sure it's got enough. You got it tight enough that it doesn't come loose on you. A lot of guys will feed it through, maybe sew it in a little bit, but I don't think we really need that. Give it a bunch of wraps, make sure it's tight, and then ring it off. Next thing, you're gonna stretch your wire out. You're gonna make sure when you throw this thing out, you don't get any kinks in it. I like to try and throw it out at least 10, 15 feet, because a lot of times in these ponds, it's real shallow until you get to the original creek bottom. So we wanna make sure we get it out there pretty quick. That's perfect. We'll run our wire out here. Now we need to attach the trap. Make sure everything's good working order. I'm using a uh, Duke number four coil spring. It's got plenty of jaw spread. I painted this one up. You don't have to. I just don't like traps being all super rusty. It's got a swivel on it. We're going to use that swivel as a drowning lock. So what you want to do is run your feed your wire through it just like that. Now watch, see how easy that moves down? When that beaver gets caught, his natural instinct is going to swim back to the water. But he's going to try to swim back. It's going to lock against that and lock the trap. You can buy drowner locks. Um, they're not very expensive. But this here is just a simple way that you don't have to buy any extra gear. So we've got our trap attached. So the next thing we're going to do, we've got to get it wired off. Keep the wire as tight as you can because you don't want it. If it's got some slack in it, what's going to happen is it's a good chance for it to kink, and if that wire kinks, it's a good chance it'll break. We want him to be able to slide to the bottom as easy as he possibly can. Get that thing wired up real good, just like when you wired the bag. You don't want it coming out. All right, that's about perfect. Now we know these beaver are coming up in here, so what we're going to do, we got to build a shelf for this trap to sit on, just like with canines. We want this trap to be solid. We don't want it wobbling around. Now we're not gonna put dirt on top of it or pack jaws, but we need a shelf solid enough so when that beaver comes up, he's gonna be swimming. You're either gonna catch him on the front foot, we don't want it firing on his belly. So we want him to catch him on the front foot or catch him on the back. So we wanna make sure our shelf is just as solid as can be. Now right here, we've got a pretty, pretty nice shelf started. We're gonna take our hatchet. There's a couple little roots in there I felt. I stuck my hand in there. Get this out of here. And if you have to, don't be afraid to dig back up in here. I mean, they're beavers. They're not, they're not nearly as cagey as a, as a coyote is. Not to take anything away from them, but it's like a big muskrat. You don't have to get super, super crazy with them. All right, now I'm probably about two and a half inches deep right there, which is gonna be about perfect. Now we're gonna set our trap. I run zero pan tension on my water traps as well, just like I do with my kites. Now that we got the trap set, we want to check. I like my pan to be pretty level. If you can see there, it's it's real close to being level. Real close. So, like I said, you don't have to be as particular as you are when you're for coyotes and canines or even cats, but these beavers here, I mean, we want to go the extra mile because we do want to catch them. We don't want to educate them. So now the trap is set. We've already dug our shelf out here. Like I said, we're shooting for two to three inches of water. We put the thing, and a lot of guys, it doesn't really matter to me if which direction the dog's on. If that trap pan's big enough, he puts his weight on there with his paws, you're gonna catch him. So 
don't get uh, don't get real crazy about which direction the dog and the trigger are facing and just put that trap down in there make sure it's solid you don't want it wobbling you could almost say this is a finished set now a lot of times what I'll do I'll make a caster mound do you need it on a slot no you don't but we're only gonna be in here for a few days so we want to try and bust these things out my theory has always been what does it hurt casters cheap I work with a lot of great lure companies that make some really good caster products we're gonna make a little caster mound here we're gonna give us that little edge because if that beaver's swimming down through here there may be enough smell that he says you know what I want to go check it out beavers are very territorial we're in a small pond here. They know every beaver probably within half a mile to a mile of this creek. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a little caster mound, try to get on their territorial instincts because if they're swimming down through here, they may not go up that slide tonight. We put a little caster mound here. It may give them enough reason to stop. Even just to come investigate it for a little bit, we can put some steel on these paws. But if you look down there, that's a finished set right there. Anybody can trap beavers. Great job, Robbie. That's a lot of beaver information. When we come back, we're headed back to Mississippi and we're gonna chase some beavers. What do you demand in a quality knife? You want a knife that works as hard as you do. Weeby knives are made for trappers who want efficiency and perfection. The Weeby Elite Double-Edged Fleshing Knife has one edge that's ultra sharp and the other side has just the right edge for pushing fat and meat for perfectly fleshed furs. And don't forget about the Weeby Wicked Sharp, the planet's sharpest skinner. When the blade goes dull, simply snap on a new one, and you're ready to go. Find them at dakotalinesnares.com. Do you need a blind that will keep you warm on a cold winter day? Do you need a blind that won't blow away on a windy fall afternoon? Do you need a blind that will never wear out? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you need a Blind Turtle Hard Shell Hunting Blind. This solid one-piece unit is perfect for deer hunters, turkey hunters, archery hunters, and gun hunters. Put it this way, if you hunt, the Blind Turtle is perfect for you. For some of us, trapping season never ends. It's in our blood. It defines the very person we are. Let Southern Snares be part of your trapping world. Be sure to try out our best-selling capital punishment predator bait and our new pure gator oil. This trip to Mississippi for me was for one reason and really one reason only. It was my quest for an otter which we'll show you in a later episode. But when you're trapping for otters, you're gonna connect and catch beavers. Well, the other day, if you remember, Justin had, uh, there's a nice little run in here. There's an old cross over here, which is hard to tell because the water's so high right now. But I, he pulled, he caught an otter, he pulls his trap, I slapped mine in there because I was on my quest for my otter. And it looks like we caught a beaver in here. If you can focus in on these channels, you're gonna catch some stuff. Can't really tell how big he is from here. Not too bad. You know, since everybody else was catching beavers, I thought I'd get in on that game too. You know, it is my show. These channels are so subtle. I mean, you can't really even. If you don't know what you're looking for, and I mean, when I come down here, it's so much different than what we trap back home. I wouldn't even thought to set one here, but Justin has been trapping this for so long. There's an old crossover right there, and this little channel just comes down through here. Now we used a, uh, that's not a bad beaver. We used a Duke 330, but we put it on a, a stand, and hopefully I can find it, which I'm probably not going to, because it probably got kicked away. No, it's gone. So, it's just a little Connie stand you push down in there. He come flying through there. He got busted. I wired him off because I was afraid with this murky water I might lose him. But uh, real good looking beaver here. Now we're pulling today. Today's our last day of trapping in Mississippi. So we're pulling all of our traps. But if you focus on the little subtle things, 
you're going to catch some stuff because I mean, at first glance it doesn't look like much, but if you start looking, you can see where the weeds and stuff have been moved a little bit, and we found that old crossover. It's just natural for them to want to work these channels down through here and get caught. We slap the 330 in the middle, and this is our result. A nice Mississippi beaver. Sometimes it's the easy thing, easiest way to catch. Just find a little, find a little bit of sign, get your traps right where they want to be, and just wait it out. This trap was here probably. It's the second check on this trap, and we got him. Good deal. You know, a lot of times when you're trapping beavers, especially in Mississippi, you have the opportunity to catch otters. Those two animals have the same habits, just like I showed right there. We were using a channel set. I was actually focusing on otters. The beaver just happened to swim through and get caught first. And like we always say, until next time, we're keeping the tradition alive here at Trapping Time. You know, the whole time I'm down there, Justin was catching beaver after beaver, and I thought he just maybe wasn't telling me, but come to think of it, I probably couldn't understand what he was saying. He probably was pointing and telling me where to put traps at, and I just wasn't connecting. I couldn't hear him. I just started shaking my head like I knew, moved on to make the next set. He probably showed me 10 different places to catch otter and beaver at, and I didn't even know what he was talking about. Didn't know I was gonna need a translator when I went to the southern part of the United States. If you liked what you saw, Go to our Facebook page, Trapping Time TV, and let us know what you think. Or you can go to our website at trappingtimetv.com.